so there's a pin which you can't see on this side of the clutch pedal and then I think I've got to possibly also disconnect the brake um, at the back here and then I'll be able to slide these out Okay, so we have the seat in the way, put a pillar down, because that's a bit harsh. And then I've removed a couple of these vents, which then seems to leave me room to get to this clip here. So I think I need to disconnect it under the bonnet first and then start trying to dismantle this. The way you get that out is it was just pushed behind it, so yeah, pulled it forward and out and through. That's probably gonna be a pain in the ass to get back in. This one came off the side. So, what it looks like next is there's a brass clip there, and then I'm going to have to pull this bar out, and hopefully the clutch will just drop off. So as you can see, that just came out from in there, and that can go in the pile of crap. Right, so... What it looks like now is that the bar will come out, which will only go one way. So, I have to watch what spaces there are and push it out. So as you can see, once you get it through further, on this side, it's going to drop out here. So, brake pedal and clutch pedal wobble. Um, I know there's some some parts here that I just don't want to uh, lose track of where they came from. So, looks like there's a space and a washer thing there. Orangey red part. <laughs> Not very technical. But yeah, I'm going to keep pulling that and uh, washing this side. I'm hoping we can get to a point where it's not going to fall apart too much and I can just get the clutch off, but yeah, looking unlikely for that. Okay, so that's the first space to fall off. I'm going to uh, put that on this bit of pipe here. Doesn't make much sense maybe, but I'm just trying to keep them in an order. I can live there. There's the brake pedal. Cool. So, what else?
spacer. Plastic, oh. plastic whatever it is, spacer. And then another one of these that fits on the inside. So, that seems to be how everything goes back. I'm just gonna pull this bar out now and then I'm assuming this will drop off. Looks like uh, that must be the. I don't know. I don't know why it's slipping. Maybe it's just that top tooth there. So it looks like it's just that tiny little tooth, maybe. Or maybe it's there. I don't know. Anyway, it's getting changed. Alright, so I thought I'd take the time to bring this onto the table in the kitchen, especially since my missus is not home and uh, we can have a quick look at what's going on here it looks like the teeth you can't quite see but they're quite worn in the middle and um for anybody that doesn't know that the way that this works is that there's these teeth in there cool. and that part's called the pole if i'm pronouncing that right and well, it's hard to do it with one hand let me see but yeah that locks in and then the ratchet basically moves that way and with the wear on your clutch this uh, this travels I'm assuming that way and um, yeah I guess it just over time would adjust itself so uh, you know you don't break your clutch cable or something like that but what I'm getting and I've had this before is that you sat in traffic you put the clutch down and it goes bang and you either lose your clutch for a second or something along those lines. It happened at a uh, retro rides weekend when I tried to pull off prop quite quickly. And uh, yeah, I just completely lost the clutch and then it was fine after that and then it did it again um on the m25 and also if i have any weight in the car it seems like it does it so i do think that my clutch isn't great anyway but uh and i've been advised you can buy an alloy version of this which is 60 quid but this was three quid and um if it does it again i'll definitely do it i just couldn't justify that at the moment with all the other problems that i've got with my cars so uh yeah what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this off and replace it with this one Check it all works and then just bunk it straight back on the car. Okay then, so um let's just take this off. So that's the old one. Pretty simple to just replace, really. Just double check all this before I go further. Yeah, looks fairly identical. Okay, so it's all refitting now with the the new pole. Paul, P A W L. Paul. So yeah, that's in there. And um, yeah, I, don't, I mean, this is the first time I've ever looked at one of these. It's it doesn't really want to ratchet down though. So I'm hoping that's that's okay. You know, it won't go. Even if I lift it up, it doesn't have much movement. Well, maybe it does a bit. But maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I know that you set it as the Haynes says here. So. 
that's on the smooth part. Uh, so I'm going to just pop it back in the car and see what it does really. You might all be screaming at your whatever you're watching this on and saying that this is crap uh, and it's the wrong part, but I'm just going to give it a go. Um, maybe this, the teeth look a bit sharper on this, so I'm just guessing that this is maybe just run over a few times and it's just one more down a bit. Um, but also it does look like a better quality part than the white ones, so maybe it's just not quite right. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just put it back together a little bit uh, and try the clutch pedal a few times and just see what happens. So just drove up to Midnight Motors, it's like two days later now, and they just supplied me with another clutch ratchet because this one I bought off eBay uh, will work, but it only works with the old pull part, whereas the um, new pull just kind of it just gets stuck. Wait, that's it. There you go. It just kind of gets stuck. So this one's the old pull part, so it does work. And it ratchets all the way down. I should, but the the new part to this all just gets stuck about there, and that's it, kind of done really. So I've got another part to replace the black part, which is white. So it's getting a bit confusing now. So I'm just keeping it all together. But uh, yeah, big thanks to Midnight Motors to sorting this out. So hopefully, this car's going to be back on the road very soon. Okay, so now I'm back home. I'm gonna. Just dismantle this a little bit. So all these bits were to the black quadrant. So I'll get that out of the way. Put that to one side. And hopefully, fingers crossed, all this is gonna fit and We'll be back on the road. Yeah, it does go in. They're a bit tight. So I'm going to put the new pull part in. Okay, so this goes in with the flat part of the spring resting on that part. And these hooks hook into the, the side of the pedal there. So then we pop that. That's it. That's that done. Okay, so there we go. Okay. So if I pop this in There we go. So that's how it should be. Now that keep that bush has popped out there. Hopefully they'll stay in. It's quite tight inside there, I'm not quite sure what's going on. But I'm hoping once it's all together they they stay in. That's the end of that. Maybe it's just because yeah, I think it's just because the bar came through. So now I've got a, the, the thankless task of climbing back under there and putting this all back together. Okay then, so it's all back together now. I didn't uh, film it all going back together just because oh, what a pain in the arse it was. But I'm going to talk you through how I did it now, because it's a bit complicated. So I kind of put the white um, quadrants on and kind of held it into the pedal with the two red spaces or uh, bushes. And then made sure it was in the right position with the paw. So then when I, I put it on, I put the shaft on up to there. Actually, no, I put the shaft all the way through without the brake pedal. 
Now the guitar string around the return spring and pulled it through the hole uh, around uh, the handle of a hammer and then used a pair of pliers around the back to push it in. So once that was sorted, I then put the um, the uh, cable through and got it to position in the end. I had a few problems with that and uh, I actually tried it a couple of times and I think the ratchet probably moved down a little bit to halfway, which is where it is now. And then I was able to kind of pull it through at the gearbox end because I was struggling with that. I had no cable at the gearbox end at all. And, uh, and it kind of, yeah, <laughs> it was a pain. After that, I put the metal bushes back on, pull obviously the bar back through. Oh yeah, and release the tension at the gearbox, pull the bar back through, put the middle ones on, wrestle the brake pedal back on, put it through there, uh, put the pin on the other side, if you can see, just so it's secure. My other pin um, went on the inside here, so uh, I might try and find another pin and put something on this end, which should be all right. Then once all that was back together, just put the uh, master cylinder stop on there. And then, as you can see, you can press the clutch. And it's all good. I haven't tried moving the car yet because there's no seat in it, but uh, yeah, that's next. So yeah, once you're at that point, you can just struggle it back onto the gearbox. Actually, it wasn't too hard once it had moved around a little bit. Like I say, I mean, you probably can't, probably can't get you in there. Oh yeah. So my quadrant is about halfway down. That's where the teeth were a bit knackered on the other one. So, uh, yeah, not an easy job. It's taken hours and hours. And actually, in a way, a couple of days. Also put a pillar down to aid getting under there. So... Gonna put a few more bits back together, put the seat in, and then try and move the car. <laughs> Don't think that's good. Well, that was a fairly horrible job. Um, definitely something you can do on your driveway. Uh, and I definitely recommend taking the seat out if you're doing it on a Mark III. I don't know if it's a, it looks a bit different on like the, I know I've seen some videos on the Mark Vs and stuff, and it looks like you can get the, um, I think you still have to take the brake pedal off, but it looks like it all comes off on the side, whereas the Mark III, there's a piece of metal on the uh, shaft side where the clutch pedal is, so. Um, that's where the quadrant is, so it looks a bit, it's a bit more awkward. I think if I was going to do it again, I'd think long and hard if I was going to pay somebody, uh, to do it, even though down here in London, the, uh, hourly rate's quite expensive. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's taken me like three days. That's only because the parts were wrong. If I'd got the right parts, I could have done it in one day. But yeah, it, it's going to take hours if you've not done it before. But hopefully this video will help. 
if you want to do it yourself definitely uh, I'd say follow what I did on the refitting of it because that's the hardest part getting it off not, isn't too difficult and uh, yeah <laughs> like I said I couldn't get my uh, clutch cable to get fully uh, extend until I think the ratchet had gone a little bit so probably something to do with a worn clutch I guess um, but anyway I've just driven it around the block a fair few times and done lots of uh, stops and starts and also managed to do a couple of very light wheel spins is a 1.1 but uh, that was when it was kind of shining itself a few times uh, like a retro rides and um, so fingers crossed this one looks a bit of a stronger unit than the last one so fingers crossed it's gonna hold out a little bit longer um, so yeah if you're gonna tackle this good luck and uh, yeah if you haven't subscribed subscribe and uh, see you on the next one some more bits to come on this car and then back to the capri again for some more clutch stuff i think so yeah stay tuned cheers